the Isle of Man TT. It's the fastest, most challenging and dangerous road race in the world. With its first race in 1907, the Isle of Man TT holds over more than a hundred years of history. With the speed increasing significantly over the years, vision and safety became more important than ever. In 1984, Arai became part of the Isle of Man TT history. Isle of Man TT heroes like Joey and Robert Dunlop, Eddie Laycock, Steve Hislop and Brian Reed all wore Arai helmets. Now, 40 years later, most riders still choose to wear an Arai helmet for this intense and high demanding road race. Nineteen eighty one was the first time I came to race here. Um, I always remember the first time down Bray Hill. Thought I knew where I was going and when I took off on the race back, when I got to the top of Bray Hill, I just felt lost again because we're just arriving so much faster. And that was that was uh, I'll never forget that experience. Ray Hill Reed showed that he meant business. I was five or six years old. The, the Isle of Man TT was, was our family holiday every year. Amazing memories of bikes whizzing past when you're five, six years old at the side of the track, you know, or waking you up for morning practice and the bikes are coming through at seven and six in the morning and that's what gets you out of bed. As a young boy, I was used to be sat at the heart side of the hedge. I used to see my heroes go past, and they were my heroes. That was the thing, and they weren't like somebody that I saw on the television. They were literally people that went past me at blooming 100 miles an hour, and that's what I wanted to do as a from a young boy. And my heroes like Brian Reed and Joey Dunlop, they were they were the guard. They are guards, you know, Steve Hislop and people that I, that's who I wanted to be. I came over here with my parents um, for the first time for about, when I was about three years old. Uh, I had an older brother who was five and uh, me and my brother, my mum and my dad uh, would come on a sidecar, all four of us. So my dad would ride the sidecar, um, my mum would sit in the sidecar and then me and my brother would sit sort of in the footwell and we had a toolbox there. And um, we used to come here and stay in a guest house down on the prom. And so some of my earliest memories have just been in that sidecar and just making the trip here. My dad, he raced at the TT. Um, and then obviously Callum, which is his birthday today. Um, he was born at the, and the TT, whereas my dad set off down Bray Hill and my mum was going into labour. And then finished his race, come back and shot straight up to the hospital to, to see Callum into the world. As far as growing up, it's like my, my dad was always my hero and like I, I was always focused on him and I always took I always took for granted who I was surrounding. Like my dad always had pride that you know he, he raced against Joey Dunlop and Steve um, Joey Dunlop Steve Robert you know the, 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 like he's raced against the best but that for me I, I never ever focused on that ever and for me my dad coming in every race and just coming home and seeing the smile on his face is what the TT was about for me. Anything you could imagine it to be, it was better. And it was just faster, just harder, more frightening, more exhilarating. Just oh, let, let, let me at it, let me go again, I want to go again, you know. It was, uh, but at the same time, immediate respect for a place that is so difficult to learn, so fast, so dangerous, but at the same time so exhilarating and so addictive. 
it's, it's all that in one. It's in the blood. Dad raced at TT. I think it was, it was always going to happen at some point. As soon as you put a helmet on and got on the bike and you start pushing it towards what we call no man's land, you focus then on the flag and when you get that tap on the shoulder, that's it, you're away then. And there's, yeah, there's no better feeling than that. He's got a good temperament. He likes to be on his own, which is absolutely suited to the Isle of Man TT. And that's what it's about. You've got to keep getting off that bike with a smile on your face. It's so important, you know, uh, and, and he's doing that. So we're just really pleased and uh, hope that continues. As soon as he mentioned that his dad, his father had raced, I thought, well, his, his, his dad's on board with it, you know, because again, it's really hard for a family. It, it, you know, us as a rider, we don't see that side of things. We're just focused on riding, whereas it's always hard on, on the family, the wife, the girlfriend, the mum, the dad. It seems like, you know, all the, 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 the champions that have had huge success here aren't the young ones, you know, they're, they're the experienced riders that have had time to do their apprenticeship and learn, and then they uh, become the masters. It's, uh, it's a very challenging and daunting um, experience that you, you feel when you're here, and uh, you know, the first thing is that everybody's safe. The Isle of Man TT has evolved over the years. The bikes have become much more advanced and faster. Timing and scoreboards have been replaced by electronic solutions. And while the shape of the helmets may not have changed much, the technology and protection have clearly improved. The helmets were a lot different to what we've got today. It didn't fit very well at all, but I had to go with it. And, you know, in the roads at home, which were very bumpy, I um, found that the helmet kept dropping down on my head. And so you were continually riding along and pushing it back into place. When we first used Aura here in 1984, just couldn't believe the fit. And also it arrived painted in my colours, which was just uh, so special. The riders here uh, are at the extreme of, of riding uh, on the roads. And that's how that development of, of what needs to improve, how the helmets evolve over the years. This is a very early design that was used by Eddie, Eddie Laycock. Um, you can see the, the ventilation is fairly basic on the top. The holder set is, is different here. It's quite large with screws in it uh, and a fairly basic uh, chin ventilation system. This helmet uh, was used by Robert Dunlop. There's an evolution of improvements here. We've now got top vents on the top. We've also got a different visor system that doesn't need the screws on the outside and a better uh, chin ventilation here at the front. The holder set is a lot smaller now on the side. This also improves the field of vision. There's also a lot more ventilation. Uh, the uh, vents are more pronounced on this with some aerodynamic aids and also uh, the new uh, visor system is a lot easier to change. There's some aerodynamic uh, additions now that come on the helmet. These are just on with double-sided tape. So in the event of a crash, these break away. It keeps that round, smooth shell that will slide and lose energy through the uh, crash. What they call glancing off. This technology that I have been pushing all, the, all through their, the, uh, the time they've been making helmets is something a lot of other helmet manufacturers are now having to adapt to because of the new safety, higher safety regulations are coming through. The way the helmets have changed in the last few years and now are I put in sort of a, a quick release to allow us to get the straps apart quicker. That's made a huge difference. One of the key things we do when we first get there is we need to get helmets off. We've got to, we've got to get airways clear. They've got the uh, emergency release tags here so it can take the chin pads out and makes our life so much easier. Obviously you can pull that out, makes a lot more room. The helmet comes off a lot easier and not just for us in a racing situation for people on the road every day as well. Our father had a, a crash in 2009. He wore an arrow. From 150 miles an hour into trees, dead stop, and then an explosion as well. The full tank of fuel exploded. It pretty much blew his right arm and leg off. 
and yet the helmet's still just got a scratch along there and it's you can still put it on. When I came to the TT last year, I was sitting fifth in the senior. And um, through my own rider error, that's the truth, I clipped the wall at Glen Helen 2. And it dragged me off the bike. And I had a 110 mile an hour crash. And it was head first. And then the injuries retracted down to my shoulder blade being cracked, including my pelvis. But I had no head injuries, no bruising, no jawline fractures, nothing. You always get up, yes, you're a bit knocked and about but having the confidence within a brand that you grow up with is vital. You know, you're not going around going, if I hit my head, am I going to be okay? I'm, I'm the pro proper advert for RI, I always think, because that's why I'm here now, is because I had an RI head crashing on my, on my head when I crashed. I've had two life-threatening crashes in my life, and both times I've had an RI helmet on my head, and I still think to that reason, that's why I'm, that's why I'm sat here. I've had some big crashes in my career and I've, when I've had arrows on my head, I've came out of it fairly unscathed and that's, that's the big thing for me, you know. When I was growing up, obviously, my, my, all my idols had arrows, you know, so it was, it was a no-brainer for me. That's the helmet I wanted to have on my head. Your equipment's got to be perfect. Your gloves have got to be right. Your visor, your tear-offs. Your helmet's got to fit good because you set off first night of practice and if, if it's not perfect to your head it's turning around because of the speed you're doing it's just mind-boggling especially for me because I'm not looking forwards all the time when I'm over the side of the bike I'll get some wind pressure here so the fit is critical it's got to be right it was the first year I got properly fitted for uh, an RA helmet and I went up to the lads and they'd done all the fittings and got the helmet to fit so snug, like it's it's perfect on your head. Whereas before, if I was running other type helmets, they, they would move and stuff. But Ari really put in the effort to make it fit right for every rider. Here, like laps are so long and, and intense that like you, you just, like comfort is everything. I'm pretty relaxed about everything with racing. You know, you can chat to me before the start of the race and you know, I don't have to be in some special zone, but I've always been really particular about the preparation on the helmet. I want the the the, the tape on the on the tear off in the in the correct position and the, the right angle and how it fits and the comfort, how the visor you know shuts and seals so I don't have the wind noise and the and, and ventilation is is key. Vision and what you can see is so critical here that I don't want any imperfection in uh, in the tear offs or the visor so I think it's a, a company goal for everybody involved is to always be the, the benchmark and have the, the highest standard. You need comfort around your face, perfect vision, especially around this place. This place is like shade, sun, sh sun in your eyes all the time. Also, you want good ventilation as well. Yeah, as you can see, you've got them ones there are massive, they're massive. You start the race from zero, so you're, you're at a temperature that is, is, a, is a cold body temperature, and within, I don't know, three or four minutes, you can, you can, you're starting to rise, but as your body go, your temperature goes up, you also climb in altitude, so the, the atmosphere gets cooler. And uh, that's the perfect scenario for, for misting and for, for an issue, but there's never a problem with the RI, so it, it deals with that without you realising. It keeps you cool and, uh, and the vision, you know, the, the peripheral vision that here is important because you're taking in so much, the speed that you're doing, it's important that you, you subconsciously see points on the track that are markers and that allow you to know that you're, you're coming to a next point or you're coming to a breaking point without actually having to turn to look. But with the, with the visual aspect from the RI, it's, it's so much better. Some other manufacturers, you don't have the same vision, you don't have the same contrast, you don't have the same uh, peripheral vision. The interior, when it gets fitted for me personally, it doesn't budge and it's in the right place for me. 
uh, the vents, it's not noisy, it, I, I can breed, <laughs> there's air coming in, it, it does everything right, it does, as it does um, everything I need it to do. In February last year, I got an injury called kickback and the chainsaw buried into the side of my skull here. I'm able to shut my eyes now and be able to lubricate it, but if that popped open, I would have a problem with the wind coming into my eye and making it a bit blurry. But these, the click element to that is so strong and it doesn't move around. There's nothing opening when it shouldn't be, but we have several vent options. We obviously have the front, we have the top side, we have the heads, and also we have the rear element to get the aerodynamics right. And it's amazing how one click can change this helmet. The visor in particular has to endure a lot during the race. Insects and other dirt reduce visibility for the rider. This is why it's necessary to work with tear-offs and to change the visor during a pit stop. Arai has improved this system over the years to make sure that changing the visor is quick and easy. There's maybe four or five or six of us doing the visor changes. I write their names on my hand so I know which pit boxes they're in. I tell them, I speak to them beforehand, make sure they have their visors and they let me know if they want a dark tint or a light tint. So it just makes it easier rather than ask all them questions when they stop. When they stop, you've got about 40 seconds or so. So you can change the visor in 10 seconds. It is nervous, but you know, it's just like changing a visor in here. And it doesn't matter if you're doing Michael Dunlop or somebody at the back of the field, their helmets are exactly the same. You're going through a section, you think, oh, it's going dark. And then I always take a tear off at a certain place. And then when you do that, you get the light back because you just get this film of flies. You're going fast and it's bumpy and everything, so poof, you need it easy. You need to do it in one motion, done. During the Isle of Man TT races, Arai provides service and support. With 40 years of experience at the Isle of Man TT, the mechanics and technicians ensure that the helmets are in top condition and meet the needs of the riders. The Arai service during the Isle of Man TT races is not just for the riders. Visitors can also use the Arai service to service their own helmet in the Arai village. The best thing for me, we've come with our ride at Isle of Man, is the service. And not only is a rider getting a service, you know, the customers are coming in, they've got the full brand at the top, and they're a company that listen to what you need. There was one person here to look after the helmets and they had two two people to look after and that was me and Joey doing lap. So and it was probably, you know, out of the back of a van. So it was a bit different to the service nowadays, yeah. So it's fantastic that so many riders can benefit now from, from the service. We've been in the, the RE business for a long time with a family and, a, and a, the service I get from the from the, the factory and, and the loyalty I've had now has been it's been top drawer, so don't change something you don't want to. They solve all of the visor problems and any issues we have, we just go to them, we give them our feedback and um, any time I've ever had a problem at the start, we just went to the, the, the Japanese at, at, the, at the time and they, they had it started in seconds and you know, it's, that's a, the privilege of being a factory rider, that they just sort whatever you need and get it done. The RI racing service is flawless. I go in and just give them my bag and say, four tear offs on the right or the left, which vice versa. It comes back brand new, you know, smells brand new, looks brand new, visors are mint. All the tear offs that you've asked for are on the right side. There's never any mistakes with the boys. They know exactly what you need. They're, like They'll fit something once and it's done. You put your helmet on and they'll test your helmet around your face and they'll push it and twist it and stuff and they'll. Fit spot on and yeah, I wouldn't use anything else. 
the service that I provide here on Man to UT, it's, yeah, it's first class. This is the, the holy grail for motorbike racing. It's just, it's what, it's the, it's the oldest motorbike race in the world. It's been going for the, the longer than anyone's been alive on the planet. So it's, it was, this is where it all started. For every motorbike race track in the world, this is where, this is where, this is where motorbike racing started and it is just sensational. I mean, to the uninitiated looking in, they must think that we're mad and we're crazy and we're bonkers, and, but we're far from that. We're all very focused. Sometimes it makes you wonder what the hell you're doing or why you're doing it, but you know, you get it right and you get it on a sun, sunny day on a track like this and there's no better feeling in the world. After TT, if, when, we, when we decide we've had enough, boring. <laughs> Spend a lot of time in a pub probably. But <laughs> we've got young families and young, young boys and girls, so uh, this TT will still be a big part of it, I'm sure, you know, because they love coming here anyway. So if we can come and just have a holiday and, and be like the other fans, get in the edge bottom and watch the bikes, that's definitely going to happen then. I want my story to continue. And I just want to keep racing around here. That's what I want for my future. I just want to keep racing around the Isle of Man. I've uh, been asked the question a lot of times, you know, had you, if you had to do it all over again, even with the, the lows, and of course I would, yes. Would love to, but would love to still be able to do it, yeah. One of my personal dreams, uh, Mr. Arai, if, you, if you're listening, he likes it, is to have one of our helmets replicated <laughs> as a paint job. That's a, that's a dream, that would be a dream. <laughs>